Hello, and welcome to Look Smarter Than You Are with OBIEE. In this series, I'll be looking at how to import BSO S-based databases into the repository. Open the BI Administration tool to see the repository. So once the BI Administration tool is open, I'm going to go to the File menu, select Open from that menu, and then for this demonstration, I'm going to go ahead and choose the online mode. But the same things we're doing could be done in offline as well. I need to enter the repository password as well as an administrator user ID and password. The repository that is currently active opens and I can see the three layers, the presentation layer on the left, the business model and mapping layer in the middle, and the physical layer on the right. So what I'm going to do to start the import process is go back to the file menu and select import metadata. Now this is because I don't wish to use any of the current connections in my physical layer. So I'm going to start a new connection by doing the import metadata. For my connection type, I'm going to use the drop down and select SBase 9 plus. Now the reason I'm seeing SBase 9 plus in case you maybe don't see it in your environment is that I am working on the latest version of OBI which is 11.1.1.9. So if you're on dot seven, you'll only see SBase 9. That will work as well and understand that even though it says SBase 9, really you will be connecting to SBase 11 databases. Enter the name of your server, your SBase server, And also enter um, an administrator, user ID, and password. Toward the bottom of the screen, click the Next button to proceed. And if everything you entered on this first screen is correct, you should see your data source on the left-hand side and your repository view on the right-hand side of this Import Metadata Select Metadata Objects screen. I'm going to click the plus sign in front of my server to see the applications available on the server. And they are not listed here in alphabetical order. Instead, they are listed in order that the databases are created in SBase. So the most recent databases will be toward the bottom, and older databases will be higher up in the list. For this particular demonstration, I'm going to select the BSO sample basic database, ever popular, used for training everywhere and all the time. By now, most of us probably have it committed to memory. But you can see because this is BSO, I do have three databases available. I'm simply going to select the basic database and using the single arrow in the middle, I'm going to import the selected database. And just that quick it's done. By default, these checkboxes at the bottom are checked. I always leave them checked because I can cut anything out that I don't want, and it's a little more challenging when you have to start to import to bring things back. Especially if you're using UDAs, make sure that Import UDAs checkbox stays checked. Click Finish to complete the import process. And your new cube will be here under Local Host in your physical layer. You can notice the little red starburst indicating it is kind of a new object that's in the physical layer. I can see the connection pool that's used to connect to this data source, as well as the application and the database below. And then here are all my dimensions from that particular database. So if I right click on caffeinated and check its properties from the pop-up menu, I can see that it is a hierarchy and here are my dimension properties. So by default, the member alias is here using the default table. And in this case, I have another alias table called long names. That's there as well. Also, you can see I have a couple of different things that you might be used to seeing. And that is the fact that I have a leaf indicator indicating that that's obviously my level zero members, as well as the root, which is the top of my hierarchy or dimension. So those are my dimension properties. 
And let's take a look at market. Let's do that same thing on market because caffeinated is an attribute column in the sample basic database. So again, I right clicked market and I'm going to scroll to the bottom for properties. And you can see I do have here some UDAs that were created along the way, as well as the, the aliases and my leaf and root. Okay, and again, hierarchies here for my market dimension. Now let's take a look at that connection pool. I'm going to go ahead and select the connection pool for just a minute and right click and again select properties from the menu that pops up. And I want to talk a little bit about how this all sets into play. So by default the maximum connections is set to 10 so that's how many people can connect um, at, at one particular time upload it to that BI server, come in and change your connection pools. So instead of pointing to your dev, let's say your dev SBA server, they can point to test or they can point to production instead. Once you're ready to move this into production, you are going to delete the admin user ID and instead you're going to put colon user all in caps. And then for the password, you would also change that to colon password. And what that's going to let you do is actually as a user logs in, it will pass the user ID and password directly back to Sbase, and especially helpful if you have Sbase filters in place. This is great for data security purposes. You don't have to try and set up all kinds of security inside OB. Let Sbase handle the security as well as those calculations. So it, it's really nice to be able to do that. So again, what you want to do is change when you're ready. I mean, first we're going to finish the import process. We need the admin user ID and password for a while to do some testing and setup. But once we're ready to let users log in and start creating reports and we want to test Sbase security, you're going to come back to your repository physical layer, you're going to right click that connection pool and the username will be changed to colon user all caps, the password colon password and those are basically just variables that allow the username and password to be passed through. And really that's what I normally change here. I normally change the server name when I'm migrating. I normally change the username and password. I also will rename this connection pool, but I'm going to hold off on that for just one second while I rename something else first. Thanks for watching and look for the other parts in this series.